Hey, this is Math 7 Unit 5, Lesson 15, Solving Equations with Rational Numbers. So we're going to solve some various equations today that include some negative values as well. All right, so here we go. Just first, just some number talk, talking about opposites and reciprocals. The variables A through H all represent different numbers. Mentally find numbers that make each equation true. And so really, it's a, it's a mental math thing here, but you can also just, just solve it. That's fine, too. And so we're thinking about here... <laughs> How does this work out? You know, <coughs> excuse me, three, to, whew, three times five is 15 and five times three is 15. And so the number that works out here <laughs> is gonna be actually just one. Here, because I'm looking at a reciprocal to get to one, if I have a seven, if I multiply that by the reciprocal one over seven, then I end up with something that looks like seven over seven, which is simply one. So the idea here is to look at what might be happening with these other letters to see what you can get to get the values, whether it be one or zero, what that might be here, okay? And so for C and D, you can have anything. You can have a half and two because now you're multiplying by the reciprocal and you're, <coughs> oh goodness, and you're good to go. Here you have negative six plus six. And so since those are the opposites, right? And you're gonna end up with a zero value. Here, because I'm trying to get a zero value, I'll find the opposite 11, which would be a negative 11. And here I can select any value I want. I could put seven and negative seven, whatever that might be, because I'm looking at two opposites that will go together to make that zero value there. <laughs> okay, down below, let's look at the solutions here, matching solutions. Let's match the equation to its solution. And so to do this here, we're going to do some math. Oh, goodness, some math work. So to get the uh, half to go away, I multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which is two over one, two over one, negative five times two is equal to a negative 10. And so this one here is gonna match up with X equals negative 10 right there. For this one, I'm gonna divide both sides by negative two. A negative nine divided by negative two is gonna be a positive uh, four and a half or a positive that or positive 4.5, however you want to look at that. And so this value matches this one right there. For C, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is still negative 2. So we multiply it by negative 2. And negative 2 over 4 is equal to negative 2 fourths, which is equal to negative 1 half, which matches this one right here. Here we're going to divide by negative 2. So seven divided by negative two, I can change that into a negative seven halves, which can be also written as negative 3.5, which matches this guy right there. And this one here, we're gonna, we have add a negative two. So let's, instead of adding a negative two, let's go ahead and um, we can subtract. Uh, well, we can, yeah, we can add a positive two so we're going to add a 2 over here and add a 2 there. And so that's going to become a negative 4.5, negative 4.5, which matches the first one up there. And then finally, uh, to get the x by itself, we're going to add a 2 and add a 2. So 2 plus a half is 2.5 or 2.5, and that matches choice 5 right there. So all these we're basically doing, we're adding opposites, multiplying by the reciprocal, just working that process there again and again. Uh, make sure you're comfortable with it. And that's a lot of what these last few lessons in this unit are gonna be doing. Okay, the hiking club is on a trip, hike up a mountain. The members increase their elevation, increase, so that's adding there, 290 feet during their hike this morning. Now they're at an elevation of 450. Explain how to find their elevation before the hike. Okay, so to find the elevation before the hike, we're gonna say, well, where are they now? They're at 450. We know that they went up 290. So to find out where they were before, let's go down 290. So we'll take 450 and then we'll subtract 290 and that'll give us their elevation before the hike there. Hans says the equation E plus 290 equals 450 describes the situation. What does the E rep variable E represent? Okay, so well in our case up here we can make E be the elevation for where it's going to be and look at this equation. Does this equation have anything to do with that one there? In this case, we would say they do. The elevation is what the E stands for, okay? Um, in this case here, it's elevation before the hike. 
So he's setting it to say, we started at a certain point, we went up 290 feet, and we arrived at 450 feet, which is what we did before, right? If I want to solve for E, I subtract 290 from both sides. So that E equals 450 minus 290, right? Which is the same as what we had up here. Han says he can rewrite the equation as E equals 450 plus negative 290 to solve for E, okay? Would we agree with that? Sure, because 450 minus 290 is the same as adding the opposite, right? And so what he says here matches what we did up here. And so we're on the same path. Everything is the same, just a different way of setting it up, but the same exact solution, okay? The temperature fell four degrees in the last hour. Now it is 21 degrees. Write and solve an equation to find the temperature it was one hour ago. Okay, so the temperature was something, right? Like our last time, that's what the temperature was. It went down four and now it's at 21. So that could become our equation. Some temperature minus four gets you to 21. So to solve for X, we add four to both sides. And so the temperature for, uh, you know, an hour ago was going to be 25 degrees. Number three. It says there are three times as many students participating in the hiking trip this year than last year. There are 42 students on the trip. Explain how to find the number of students that came on the hiking trip last year. Well, we know this year there's three times as many students. So this year we have three times the number of students and we know that in this case here, we have 42 this year. So last year, the number of students, if we took that value and multiplied it by three, that tells us how many we have this year. So to find last year's value of students, S will take three S and make it equal to 42. Let's divide both sides by three, or again, this is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Same idea, okay? Just depends on what you wanna talk about. And so our number of students is 42 divided by three, which was 14. So we had 14 kids on the trip last year. May says the equation 3s equals 42 describes the situation, which is what we did there. Got it. What does the variable s represent? S represents the number of students last year. And that's really what that is. The number of students last year is what the s value is. May says she can rewrite her equation as s equals one third times 42 to solve for s. Compare May's strategy to your strategy for finding the number of students on last year's trip. Again, if we had 3s and we set that equal to 42, what we're doing is we're multiplying by the reciprocal, multiplying by the reciprocal. So this becomes eliminated and you're left with s equals 42 times 1 third, which matches what she's doing when she rewrites that, right? So it's the same idea of what we did before. It's the same as 42 divided by three, except now you're just showing it as multiplying by a reciprocal. The cost of a hiking trip this year is two thirds the cost of last year's trip. So two thirds of last year's. La this year's trip is 32. So what we wanna do is we look at two thirds of last year, and we can call that cost, two thirds times the cost, is a trip this year. So this year is $32. And so two thirds of last year is gonna equal this year's trip. So write and solve an equation to figure that out. So again, we have two thirds of last year, we'll call that C for cost of last year equals this year. So to find out what the cost was last year, I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. All right, so this gets eliminated. So I'm left with the cost equals 32 times three over two. And I can reduce one goes six, two goes in here 16 times and 16 times three for our cost is $48. So last year, the cost was $48. This year, it's two thirds as much. And we're down to 32, which makes sense because it's less than one, right? So our price is definitely reducing from 48 to $32. All right, that's the idea there. Now you have a card sort activity you might be doing in class today. And so for this activity, we can see that we have a set of cards and they want you to um, match numbers with the additive inverse this is one of the first things I want you to do. The additive inverse means we're looking at the opposite signs, right? So you're looking at something like two and a negative two. Those are opposite signs there, 
something along those lines. If you have numbers you're matching the mul multiplicative inverses, okay, that's going to mean they have the same sign, but it's going to be something along the lines of a negative three and a negative one third. Okay, so we're basically doing the reciprocal, we're flipping that over there, okay? So for the multiplicative, they need the same sign, but to be an additive inverse, they're going to have the opposite sign. And then you can do that with your card sort today, and off you go. All right, so in summary of today's lesson real quick, I haven't done a summary for a few lessons, we can say that we can always add the opposite of a to negative a to each side. So we have an equation, we can add the opposite, and that helps us get the variable by itself. Another thing we can do is we can multiply by the reciprocal to find out what uh, to get a value by itself is going to be. And those are the two steps we tend to do when we're solving for various equations. All right, let's take a look at tonight's homework. All right, so starting. with a we're going to go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal so we multiply by 5 over 2 so we end up with 30 over 2 and 30 over 2 is the same as 15 all right over here we're going to add by the opposite so instead of 4.5 we're going to add 8 to that and negative 4.5 plus 8 is going to be equal to in our case here 3.5 over here, we're going to subtract a half from both sides. So negative 3 and take away 3 more becomes a negative 3 and a half. This one, we have x times 3, so multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by the reciprocal, 1 third. So 12 over 3 is what we have, and 12 over 3 is the same as 4. And here, I'll multiply by the reciprocal, so negative 1 third, and then times a negative 1 third. So that gets you a negative 12 over a negative three, which is the same as four. All right, number two, evaluate each expression. Wow, lots of announcements going on today. Evaluate each expression if X is two fifths and Y is negative four and Z is negative 0.2. So we're gonna plug these numbers in. So if X is two fifths, we have two fifths plus Y, which is negative four. So we end up then with that we have a difference, so I'm going to do a negative solution, and 4 minus 2 fifths is going to give me 3, and 5 minus 2 is 3, so 5 and a 3 and 3 fifths there. Okay? For this one, 2's x minus z, so we're going to do 2 times 2 fifths, my, 2 times 2 fifths, minus z, which is negative. 0 0.2 so this becomes 4 fifths 4 fifths and minus a minus is add the opposite which is 0.2 so I have a fraction and a decimal I can go with the fraction way decimal way doesn't matter so 4 fifths is the same as 0.8 and if I add 0.8 to 0.2 we end up with 1 here we have 2 fifths plus a negative 4 plus negative 0 0.2 okay so 2 fifths is the same as 0.4 so we have 0.4 we have minus 4 and then we have uh, minus 0.2 all right so a 0.4 and a minus 0.2 become a positive 0.2 right so we're at negative 4 plus 0.2 when I put the uh, the decimals together there so a negative 4 plus a positive 0.2 is going to give us a negative 3.8. And finally, we have negative 4 times 2 fifths. That becomes a negative 8 over 5. And we can leave it there just like that. Number 3, I want you to match each equation to a step that will help solve the equation. All right. So for A, we have 5x equals 0.4. So to solve this one here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal is one fifth, so multiply by one fifth. That's going to be idea number three. Okay. 
here we really have 1 fifth x equals 8. That's what x over 5 is. So I multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 fifth would be multiplying by 5. And that's going to be choice number 1. Here, this is uh, the same as negative 1 fifth x. So to get the x by itself, I would multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which is negative 5 over 1. So multiply by negative 5 is number 2. And here to multiply this one, I multiply by the reciprocal. Negative 1 fifth is the reciprocal of negative 5, and that's going to match 4. All right, number 4. Write an equation where a number is added to a variable and a solution is negative 8. And okay, so our solution is going to be, we can say an equation where a number, call number x, is added to a variable 3, and we end up with negative 5. When I do this here, if I subtracted 3 to both sides, negative 5 plus negative 3 is equal to negative 8. So my solution doesn't mean it equals negative 8, it means that my x value is negative 8. Write an equation where numbers multiply the variable and the solution is negative 4. Okay, so if I had 5 times x and I set that equal to negative 4, if I think about what can x be, I want x to be negative 4 fifths, right? So if I divide both sides by 5, what do I end up with? Negative 4 fifths. Matches right there. Number 5. The markings in a number line are evenly spaced. Label the other markings on the number line. So here we have 1. This must be negative 2. This makes this negative 1.5. This is negative 0.5, which makes this 0.5. This is 1, and this is 1.5. So we just have to kind of look and see how is the spacing happening here, right? There's our whole number jumps there to there. Everything's 0.5. And number six, our last one today. <clears throat> All right, James Cameron descended the bottom of Challenger Deep, and he was in the Challenger. Okay, he went down 35,814 feet. All right, change in depth was negative four feet per second. We can use the equation y equals negative 4x, that's our change in depth, to model the relationship of y is depth and x is time. So that's our depth and that's our time. All right, how many seconds does this model suggest it would take for the challenger to reach the bottom? So our depth is there at negative 35,814 feet. We know that our rate is negative four feet per second and we're trying to find out how long that would take, our x value there. So to solve this, we divide both sides by four or we multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, and that's fine to say too, multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, let's just do that since that's what we've been talking about. So negative 35,014 times negative one fourth or negative 35,000 divided by four means that I have negative, or sorry, I end up with a positive uh, 8,953 Point five is my time. That's how many seconds it would take to get there. Because I'm going down, I'm gonna make that a negative value and divide by my descent to say, in terms of seconds, it would take almost 9,000 seconds to get down to where it needs to be. To end the mission, Deep Sea Challenger made a one hour ascent to the surface. How many seconds is this? Okay, so if we look at an hour, okay, you have 60 in, a, in one hour, so one hour is the same as there are 60 minutes in one hour and there are 60 seconds in one minute. So by multiplying this out, the hours are gonna cancel, the minutes are gonna cancel and you're left with your term being just seconds, right? So one times 60 times 60 is, is 3,600 seconds. The ascent can be modeled by a different proportional relationship, y equals kx. What is the value of k in this case here? So k is our ascent, okay? And so our ascent in this case is gonna be how far up it goes. It's gonna go up 35,814 feet in 3,600 seconds. So that's our feet per second. So that's our k value here. So y equals that times x. That's our k value. All right, and that's it for the day. Hope you have a good one. We'll see you next time.